Well, crystals. So, um, do I wait more? Do I wait more if I'm doing the RBIM way? Do I wait more? So if I do the process, do I wait for it to happen more? Because sometimes the identification identification doesn't happen in the way maybe you can have a full. And this indicates that the context is not likely separated fully. It means that whatever we, when we do this kind of identification, we're waiting for a space, space to open up. Is that it's easy to? Uh, a lot of people have problem with the comparison mode, which is comparison mode. Where what, what's that is is that when you try to do things, what what happens is that we tend to compare what where we come from. So if I'm trying to do something that is new, to check for it, that's a check we do, we check for it to to understand this this new thing I'm going to do, did I do it right or something like that, we, we need to check for it. And when we do that, we shift position in our brain, because we shift in position in space, or in, in a way of space. So when we shift context here in the future, so we go into the future, creating a future memory. And we focus on that. Focus. And we create space. The question is, uh, if you, uh, as yourself, float and matches this future memory, so you become the future memory, you will tend to have an experience that's what people call um, no difference. It's kind of hard to describe what's or its beauty. Or you, you had to be there. What typically happens is that when you do this and become aware of the space, is that it has to unfold or you have to wait for it. Because sometimes the response in your system is not that big, it's a subtle way. And since the brain is building this, you have to also understand that the brain builds stuff. It links. So if the brain has X number of neurons, It has X number of neurons and the pathway you're using or have been using in the context is always you know, amplified. It's, it's uh, thicker and wider and the, uh, and the term is it goes faster. So if you're you know, doing this kind of whatever you call it, daily activity called reality, sooner or later you will form a way of increasing the same pathway between neurons in and the brain does this, this in neural net so it's it's optimizing whatever you do if you're thinking a lot on problem solving for example you, know, you create a creative strategy if you're a writer or an author to books you tend to create uh, environments inside your head where you're exploring um, a good story uh, for example, uh, uh, some authors actually visit the place or live there. So if you're an author that you write about 1600 Japan, 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 I don't know how to pronounce this in English actually, Japan. And you write about uh, samurai codes. Some authors actually live there when you're writing the book. So they're identifying, so they identify with the 1600s. And there is some books, uh, Shogun, for example. That's the author there, James Clavell. He was when he was asked about Japanese people and how he could uh, describe the samurai way so well in the Shogun and all that. He told them that he was he lived there. 
So for him, when he was writing the book, he was actually living in 1600 century. And most people, when you get that, that kind of answer, well, it's a nut. No, what he is doing is identifying with the thing he's writing about. So he's increasing his access to that kind of information, especially when writing a book, that helps. But it's what, what, what people would call, it's not normal. But that's what many writers do. That's that kind of strategy they use. And you need to keep that separate also because it's reality strategy and all this stuff. So anyway, so when you start to access a new memory here, we create a new memory and we start to access that. The, the brain updates the old links to this but it takes some time to do that because you created a new context and the new context takes some time to get the brain to you know link all these connections to it so the new neural net then is activated here with the new memory access point and new context the thing here is when you do this it's creating the content which is the memory also alters what people call strategies and that means uh, behavior behaviors you do and how you decide to do things or make friends or not to make friends so you have the new experience what happens is that when you made a full identification you have the experience partly or fully or something like that uh, you need to also to integrate that in uh, your life so when you meeting people who run some different experience different behaviors and all that stuff you either stay true to this you stay either stay true or not to your own experience and that means that your decision then changes because if you're if you want to be let's say peace of mind oh i have a peace now in my mind Ooh, cool cool i'm feeling peace of mind and then you meet uh, Mr. Richard, and uh, Mr. Richard is, is sad and angry, and he is really upset. And then you either have to keep going with your peace of mind, or sympathize with uh, this Mr. Richard. And if you sympathize with Mr. Richard, you will feel that and that, or you will feel your own uh, whatever you sympathize with. But you won't have this. You want to have a peace of mind. So then you have to choose to keep it around in the peace of mind while you're interacting with Mr. Richard. And that's just great. That's what I recommend people to do. You have your own peace of mind. Your own little Yoda of Star Wars. Oh, or a little uh, <coughs> Buddha or Dalai Lama or something like that. Your own little peace of mind. and You're interacting with the world in this peace of mind way. And um, when you interact with the sad and tragic uh, Mr. Richard, you can do that. But also can also do something else. And then go back to do peace of mind later. That's okay also. So you have options. The question is, do I wait more or not? Well, normally, depending on what it is, it can take a, lo a lot of time before the system has fully uplinked and integrated that all this kind of neurons to this new future memory until you become you know oh this is me now this is me how I express myself in the world oh cool and that can go in five minutes and it can take a few months because uh, it's hard for me to judge because when I'm doing this I've been doing this for many many years so for me this is kind of uh, basic stuff uh, uh, automatic or habit whatever you call it when I'm finding myself, uh, so what I normally do as a strategy is that if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to do something new, then normally what I will do is ask myself, what kind of experience Do I want to have? So if I'm going shopping, for example, I can ask myself that. What kind of experience do I want to have when I go shopping? 
Most people live a boring life. This is most true for most people. Boring life. My life sucks because I have nothing to do. <clears throat> and I go like, you can have a million things to do if you want. Well, life is boring. So you always need to challenge yourself. So you have something that you're interested, interested in. Oh, I'm interested in that. And you can do things then. Read books or <clears throat> travel to places or talk to people or search to Google or whatever. But this is the basic question. What kind of experience do I want to have when I'm shopping? Or what kind of experience do I want to have with this friend? Or what kind of experience do I want to have when I game? And what kind of experience, if I have a client, what kind of experience do I have, want to have with this client? Or what kind of experience do I want to have with uh, my family? Or uh, what kind of experience do I want to have with this stranger? Most people don't think this way because, you know, they're using what we call default or habit. Because they say, well, my reality is like this. Robert, you can't change that because reality is what it is. I know this is my reality and this uh, either suck or whatever it is, you know. And I go like, okay, cool. So you know this is true, yes. So I have a past memory that runs the reality. Because they know, and if you know, not believe, and I'm not talking about belief here, I'm talking about you know. Belief is a projection you do of a value and stuff like that. But when you know, that's a different uh, logical expression of things we do in life and how our brain works. When we know we have a past memory, when we have a past memory, that makes the brain create the context and content and runs, you know, what people call unconscious strategies. So what kind of experience do I want to have? So if I'm having a meeting with a friend or something like that, and the experience I want to have normally is in some way, I'm, you know, finding myself, well, I don't want that kind of experience. I want a new one. So I establish a future memory to that new experience, have that with a friend. Or if I have uh, someone I meet and don't like for some reason, I might not, you know, take them as a client. I'm deciding that, the client is not worth the trouble of my time or experience or whatever it is. So the clients think, well, I need your time and money or whatever you call it. And I, don't, and I say, I don't want to because it doesn't help me to maintain or run my own experience. So you, have to, you can send them elsewhere. And that's the same is true with the family or strangers and all that stuff. When I'm playing games, for example, I'm often uh, using a, what you call a zone or flow experience and I define that so I can increase my efficiency which is all this is doing is increase the efficiency and that's what I'm doing when I'm about to do something new in a different context now I can also set a, a, a default state of myself for example because self is an association to memory. That's what creates consciousness. That's because if you lose the memory, you lose yourself. It's not tied to a soul. I'm drinking some coffee. I'm a slave under the drugs. Yeah, at least the coffee drugs. Well, it adds to my experience. I guess I'm going to continue with that at least for a while so since yourself is tied to memory and you lose yourself the qu raises question about the soul also because well I would say you don't have one because if you don't have a memory nothing exists for you so that becomes memory becomes pretty important the thing here is when you know that your reality works the way it does because this is how life is for you then you have a past memory and if you know that you can also build a new one so you can have a new experience of whatever you're going to do. But this is my normal strategy, what I'm doing, what kind of experience do I want to have with this kind of context. 
uh, I can do that with all the kind of different. And normally I don't think about this ahead. I'm just deciding to, I want to have this experience and then I just do it because I have optimized my space access through our behind. So I'm do doing this so much, so for me it's more or less automatic. It's most like the, you know, anything you do, you create a habit of it. I created this kind of habit. And I do interflow daily, done for a year, more now. And it's not that complicated. And when you, for example, if you can't do, uh, when, you, when I tell people to learn RBIM, for example, I ask them, if you're going to learn RBM, I ask them to make, you already learned it. So you create a future memory that you already learned something you haven't learned yet. So you're going to learn this to make it, to be able to use it. But before you even learn it, you apply that you have already learned it so you then can use it. So then you have already gone into the place of, I'm already using RBIM for my own experience of life. Now this is all going on before you even start to learn the system. Most people don't do that by the way. You're using your old strategy to learn. That's what you're doing most likely. You're doing that. You're using your old strategy to learn RBIM instead of using the new system, RBM, to learn the new system of RBM so you can use it for your own experience. Make sense? I hope it makes sense. It's kind of fun actually, if you ask me. And your own learning strategy is based on fear, most likely. Fear, feeling stupid, for example. Most people don't want to feel stupid. I don't know why. I'm feeling stupid all the time because I'm asking a stupid question, people say me. Some people don't like me because I'm a nutcase, because I I can't know better than, uh, you know, some NLP people say, tell me, you know, I don't know, I understand NLP. You can ask uh, a lot of NLP people who knows me that I pretty much know the ins and outs of NLP. And that's me, that's what I like to say. That's, I'm a nutcase or a genius depending on who you ask. But the thing here is what people want is, is this, they don't want to fear feeling stupid. And I'm feeling stupid pretty much when I ask a question because, you know, I'm asking question like, why can't I, you know, when you're teaching stuff uh, of RBIM, for example, as I do, I'm asking the student to have already created future memory to learn it, and you learn it, use it, and experience it for their own benefit in all life before they even learn it. And they go like, but I haven't learned it yet, and I don't care, I'll create a memory. So you create a memory, and they go like, okay. And they create a memory, they have the space and all that stuff, and the brain goes like, cool. Because the brain now knows where to put the information. You created a context. So the brain links it links the memories, it links the information, oh my god. It makes it easy for the brain to do things for you. That's what happens. The brain now knows, oh, when I'm learning RBIM now, to use it for myself, to create my experience, cool. The brain goes, and I have this future memory that create the content and the space that opens up and all that stuff. Oh, space, oh, cool. Flying in space, bold to go. Then the brain knows where to put the information when you start learning this. So it, you learn it faster and easier and more efficient. Because you have a new experience learning it and why do you apply it to learning. So the brain knows where to put this new information, what kind of context it has to put the information. If you do that, the old strategy to learn, the brain doesn't know where to go. And I'm using this with dyslexics and people who can't learn a lot of information in school. I'm asking them, if you read a book, Read a book. And people go like, yes. Read the... And ask them, what's the book about? Before they even read it. 
Well, it's a book of history. Okay, what else? Well, it's a history about uh, kings and queens. Okay, what else? Well, it's uh, my teacher told me to read it to uh, find out about uh, this segment of history. Now, this is all pre cursor to before you even read the book. Why do you do that? Why? Big question mark. Why? Why, why, why do you do that? Well, this creates a future memory. The, know, the information you haven't, you haven't re read the book, so the brain now starts to understand where to put the new information when you read it. So when later on when you read the book, you actually recall, recall more information about the book. If you don't, if you read the book and do this after, it's not as good as doing this. So the sequence of doing this kind of event. One way is easier, one way is harder. And normally people read a book and then try to find out what's going on in the book. And it's really hard to recall the information. But the more you define it before you read the book, or as we call a memory, it's due to the brain creates a location in the brain to store info. Then the brain goes, oh man, that's where I should put the new information. And then you can recall it much, much easier also. It's a win-win. You win. You win a lot of information and you do better grades in school and you have more fun. Fun is important. So if I have someone who is uh, have trouble in school reading or in study and all that stuff, I ask them about what's the book about. I'm asking them to define the story, the <clears throat> whatever they're going to do, and make a guess if they need to, what they are about to learn, all that stuff. And if you do that, it's easy for them to, when they do a test or grade in school, it's to recall more of the information about the book. And this you can test yourself and find out how it works for you. And this is the same thing I want you to do when you're learning RBIM. So if I'm going to learn RBM, this sounds like a cool technology, Robert. I like it. I want to have a future memory, man. And I say, don't smoke the weed. Don't smoke the weed. You say, to me, you tell me to smoke the weed. No, I don't tell you to smoke the weed. I'm asking you to. When you learn this cool technology, people go like, oh, yeah, man. And I ask yourself, define it as much as how do you, when you have learned it. Oh, yeah, when I've learned it, then I can really, you know, use it for my benefit to create my, you know, super experience when I'm having sex with my uh, boyfriend. And if you're a guy who has sex with your boyfriend, use condom, especially if you don't know that because HIV is really dangerous for people. Uh, so just make sure of that. If you have sex with a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're not, you know, gay or lesbian, uh, for some reason lesbians is more okay gay people. Those people are more gay but it's more okay to be a lesbian than a homosexual because homosexual is not as good to be a lesbian. Lesbian is better than... And I don't understand that kind of uh, thinking because it has to be the same. But most people say it's not the same because it's different. And since it's different, one is better, one is worse. And I go like, it doesn't make sense to me. So you're using RBM and you learn it and then you use it for your own experience. So you use it to enhance your sex life, for example, or your relationship with people or you're making uh, funny words on the paper with uh, the pen, like I do, to make fun and have fun. Because you have to have fun somehow. And I like colors, I like colors. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you find a blue police box uh, in the middle of it, and uh, you don't know how it got there, but it's there, it's a blue police box, with a small window and a door, and you have someone like who there, and it's not the rock group. So you use RBM to learn RBM and how to use it and experience it before you even start to learn it. So you create a future memory. So you have the space there because that helps the brain to localize the information and create space for it. 
but it also creates context and while you create a context you can reference it as content later so you actually learn a new way of strategy that is more efficient than your old one most likely because the old one make you feeling stupid sometimes or uh, regard as not case or you don't want to feel you know that you don't know anything you don't ask the questions because you're afraid of you know does they think I'm stupid or because a lot of people when they go in school actually learn to be stupid one guy I'm having a student in down under he went to school and uh, his, his teacher asked a question to the class to him, to him and he couldn't answer it so he felt stupid so he couldn't learn things and um, that's not good so before you read a book define the information about the book in history you're going to learn as much as you call then you read the book because you can recall more information then that's how the brain does it locate information to context and the RBM way helps you to do that once you streamline this it will take a while because you have to be aware of the space and once you become aware of the space more and more with the memories it makes it easy for you to build more experience you want to have you can increase your sex life your relationships uh, dancing and singing and stuff like that you can increase your learning curve and most of all you can enjoy life more enjoy life more so when i'm uh, having breakfast in the morning for example i'm having breakfast and i'm having coffee i'm having orange juice i'm having an egg and two bacon strips and some fruit often uh, and every morning i have this that's uh, for me a fantastic wonderful experience because i wanted to have that and uh, every day uh, after I have the breakfast, sooner or later in the day, I'm waiting for the next morning because uh, the morning is going to be wonderful because I'm going to have breakfast again. I love to have breakfast. I could have breakfast every single moment of the day. That's not functional or useful, but that's how I feel about my breakfast in the morning because it's such a wonderful experience. And learning something new it makes more sense for me to ask people what kind of experience do I want to have with this kind of context and creating new habits if you like or new realities or having my own experience and to do that before I even engage into the you know activities I'm learning RBIM I learn to use it and I'll create my experience and once I learn that, I also have a, a more efficient strategy to learn other things also. And I can apply that to, you know, reading a book or information in school. And I can use that to, you know, uh, if you're talking work, um, yeah, you can apply it to, uh, I, for golf swings, I use it for golf swings, teaching. I uh, increase, I use it for dyslexia, for those of a dyslexic. I learned how to learn and read and you know I had uh, dyslexics who, who has been diagnosed and all that stuff and in one hour they are not dyslexic anymore that's what I've been able to do and I can also teach that but it's, a lot of people have trouble with, to do that because in the dyslexic field the people tell me that what I'm doing or what I'm telling them people to do is not possible because they can't do it and this leads me to the short people other people will try to tell you what you can't do that's what other people is telling you they tell you what you can't do because they can't do it or they believe since they can't do it then other people can't do it do it that's how people re uh, reason logical so other people they tell you what you can't do because they believe that you can't do it and since you can't do it they can't do it and if they can't do it other people can't do it and it doesn't matter if you try to you know communicate with them that you can actually do it because they would try to tell you that you can't do it because they know that other people can't do it because they can't do it and the other people can't do it. And then this is kind of a loop they go through. And this creates what we call a recursive action. 
the definition of itself, definition of itself, and, the, and it's what creates is a limitation. And this also creates how they know. They know this is true also, that other people can't do it. And this is a memory. Instead of, you know, uh, using the meta model or trying to, you know, logically rationalize with them, you, why not just create a future new memory? That's what I'm asking. Why not do that? Why not assume that everybody can do it? That seems like a more oh, fantastic coffee. One of my absolute favorite favorite scenes from TV shows are the police officer uh, or detective in uh, uh, what do you call it. Uh, this is great coffee and the pi apple pie also and it's Twin Peaks Twin Peaks TV show when he arrives in the city and he sits down in the coffee shop he is having a cup of coffee and he says you know this is the best coffee I ever had you know stuff like that and it's m one of my fav favorite TV uh, scenes ever and today I think if he come here and taste my coffee I think he would say you know this is a great coffee. So, this is how people do it. Other people, I can't do it. So that means other people can't do it either. And they will try to tell you that's how life works, you know. And that's what other people try to do. And then that's looping. Instead of doing that, skip that. Don't listen to them. Create a new memory. Start to do things that you want to do, and have lots of fun. So.